Hi, you are watching Kolsky Drones and welcome back and today we've got the Vizio 812G GPS Drone. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we've got the new Vizio GPS Drone. Uh, private eyes it says on the box. I've got the 812G WK which is the 5 megapixel camera. You can buy it in different versions. Uh, this is the 5 megapixel camera, so this is the best quality camera you can get on it. As you can see, it's quite a nice box. Don't know why they called it private eye. So in the box you get <coughs> the controller, the drone, the phone holder, bag of spares, and the manual. So we'll just go through, we'll have a look at the drone first. Very similar in design to the old Vizio. Uh, it's quite a bit heavier, and that's because it's obviously got a GPS unit in and the battery is bigger. But apart from that, it's very, very similar. It actually feels better quality than the old one, I must admit. It feels stronger. There doesn't seem to be as much flex in anything, and it does seem a bit stronger than the old one. It does run on a proprietary battery. So the battery you get is an 1800 milliamp hour one cell. But it's actually 3.85, so it's actually a high volt and you get the charger with it in the bag so it's good for about 14 minute flight time Just pop that back in there you also get the controller now the controller is more of your decent size, it's more of the size of a uh, hobby grade transmitter doesn't unfortunately feel hobby grade, it feels a bit cheap to be honest the 6 don't feel the best so on the front of the controller you've got your on and off switch, you've got your camera button, your video button, your emergency stop button, your headless mode, return to home and calibrate the gyros and on the top you've got a speed button and an orbiting button. Now from what I can see on this, I haven't flown it yet but there doesn't seem to be an auto take off an auto land button which I find pretty strange to be honest on a drone these days. On the back you've take four AA batteries and there's you screw in there, this comes off, it's quite tight and in here goes your phone holder, makes quite a neat job of it to be honest, and there's your phone holders, there's no antennas on the top of it, it's got built in antenna, you've not got any folding to do, and then your phone will go in the slot in the top. So let's just turn the drone on, in fact let's just show you underneath of the drone. So there's no optical hold on this, it does have a, an adjustable camera, it's only adjustable before you fly, so you can't adjust it with the app. It's a module camera, so if you flick the front of the camera off, like that, this is where your SD card goes, and your SD card slots into there, and we'll click in. So the SD card goes in there, then just make sure your antennas are back out of the way. Put it right around, it'll help. Get your antenna out of the way and just push it back in. And there's your SD card inside it, which is quite a nice feature. So it will, return, will obviously record to the SD card by pressing the buttons on the controller. Let's just flick it on. So as you can see, everything's flashing underneath. Turn the transmitter on. Standard way to bind. So there you go, you're bound to the quad. Got solid greens at the front, flashing at the red. Flashing at the red at the back because it's looking for a GPS lock. Until it gets 10 or more GPS locks, it will not let you set off. So on the controller, you've got this button here, and this calibrates compass. So if you press that button in like that, all the lights will flash at the front. And as you can see, spin it round until... Might not do it in here because it's inside. There you go, you've got solid reds at the back. Once you get the solid reds at the back, nose down. I don't recommend doing this inside, this will be a proper calibration because it's inside. You've got solid greens at the front and now you've got your reds flashing at the back again. And that's simply because it's waiting for a GPS lock. So, it's now, in essence, ready to fly. So, obviously it has an app. And the app it runs on is the XSW. Just, just let me connect it to my Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi is the 1080p GPS. Yeah. 
and that's connected and the app we need is XSW GPS if you can see that click on the app and the app didn't work let's try it again so I've had to turn my phone on and off to get it to work and it's the first time it's ever done that so I won't let that put you off too much but I will say one thing, it won't fly on my other phone. Now the strange thing is, this is very very similar to the 9000S that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago that I really like and that bound to that phone fine and the app's virtually identical so I don't understand what's going on here but it might have a little bit of an issue. So as you can see there's a little bit of lag there. But I think only what you expect from a Wi-Fi drone. You're not going. You can't fly FPV with a Wi-Fi drone. So let's just go through the app quickly. So that is follow me mode. So the little picture of a person is follow me mode. And it won't actually connect to that yet because I've not got enough signal. It might come on. I sometimes can get the signal in here. This is your waypoint mode. I've no map obviously, but your waypoints are here. You draw, you put your points in, it won't work because I've got the map, and then you upload it, and off you go and fly. Return to home. Picture mode. And then in your settings you've got, you have to adjust the height of your waypoints, and the speed of your waypoints. Now, the only thing is, I can guarantee these will not stay, you'll have to do this every time you want to fly, unfortunately. Your map. You choose aircraft display on map center and map coordinates auto calibrated it's in China, you don't do that obviously. And I didn't have a map bit selected, so if I go to standard, I should put the map on my screen. But it still may not load because I've no GPS in here at all. Um, okay, so the app's crashed again. Okay, just let me go and reboot my phone again. I'll be back in a second. I am back again, so I've rebooted the phone again, and I tried it with a different phone uh, when I was gone, and that wouldn't even find the Wi-Fi connection. So I don't know whether this is just an issue I'm having today with it or not. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and we'll move on from that. So you've got your VR button. So if you put it in some VR goggles, you can make it work. Camera button, video button, your photos where they put them, the altitude and distance, your speed, your position, your mount of satellites, your position of the craft, so pitch and roll, battery voltage from the craft, signal strength, and then in here you've got your adjust your waypoints, this is your map, and then others you've got quality of transmission so you can select 480 or 720 now that is the what's coming back to here so if you've got a lot of lag knock it into 480 if you haven't you can use a 720 it was on 720 when we originally put it on but like i said it keeps reverting back so i've restarted it up again calibrate a accelerometer and calibrate your magnometer so that's basically the app as you can see I've now got a 720 feed, but I had a 720 feed when I showed it you last time, so. I'm a little bit disturbed, I must admit, about the fact that's, that is worrying that if it's going to disconnect in the air. But of course, you can still control it with your transmitter, and it has got returned to home, so. Everything should be good. And it might just be my phone that's playing, this one's playing up today, I don't know, so. I'm still going to give it the benefit of the doubt. So you also get a bag of spares, and in here you get a full set of props. And he gets that prop guards. And the prop guards are quite neat. So the prop guards, this bit, you flick this bit out and you push it in there. Now prop guards on a folding drone always amaze me a little bit. The drone folds up, so why would you want to put prop guards on it? But they're good for a beginner. And this is your charging cable. So it's a USB charging cable, and your battery charges by USB. So all in all, the drone feels nice, but it does feel very similar 
to the S9000S that I did. Now if it flies like that I'll be more than happy because I love that drone. I thought that was a really nice drone. The camera was about comparable with the others that you get for that but it was a really nice drone. You can see it's got two red LEDs in the front. We're still flashing obviously because I've got no GPS. It weighs about 210 grams so it's well within the 250 grams and the transmitter, the other buttons on here, you've got are your trim buttons. So the transmitter doesn't feel too bad in your hand, but what I would say is the sticks don't feel great. So to calibrate the gyro, both sticks in. I don't know if you can see them flashing there. I'll just show you, it's not going to calibrate because it's in my hand now, but there you go, till it flashes. Then let go of the sticks and it'll set itself. And then the only other thing you'll have to do is calibrate the compass. Now, what I have noticed with cheap brushless drones like this, sorry, cheap brush drones like this, is make sure you calibrate that compass. I, I calibrate the compass on every flight on one of these. A lot of them make you do it automatically. This one actually doesn't. This one lets you choose. But for the 30 seconds it takes, it's worth doing just to be on the safe side. The camera quality looks all right, actually, on the screen. I haven't obviously done a recording yet. I haven't recorded any video back to my to the drone because I haven't flown it but yeah it looks quite decent so of, overall it looks decent this cost me £77 and I think for £77 it's probably worth the money obviously the big big thing is going to be how well it flies and what the video looks like now I think I've said loads of videos I do I don't get too hung up on the fact the video the video quality looks like because I know it's not going to look amazing because it's a cheap £73 drone it's how it flies to me and is it going to fly nice the S9000S flew really, really nice, so if this one flies the same, we'll be happy with that. I can't fly it at the minute because the weather's absolutely appalling, so I will post another video with my overall conclusions. I'll tell you how well it's done, make sure the app's going to be behaving itself, and what I really think about the way it flies, and obviously, I'll then have flight footage, I'll have app footage, and I'll have footage recorded from my GoPro, so you can see how, this is, how stable this looks in the air. So, thanks very much for watching, have a fantastic day, and don't forget, get plenty of flying done. Thanks very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you do please hit the like button and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.